Please help me welcome our old past DC 27 governor, distinguished Toastmaster, past international director, Ed Sellers. Have you ever worked with someone and thought, that person has an attitude problem? <laughs> I would love to change their attitude. Have you ever thought that? Yeah. I got bad news for you. You can't really change their attitude directly. But I got good news for you. You can change their attitude indirectly. And I'm going to tell you how. You can change their attitude by changing your own. So, in my leadership track, both in the professional life and in Toastmasters, I've had the opportunity to witness leadership in three distinctly different environments. The business workplace, a volunteer organization like Toastmasters International, and the military. And I've looked throughout those to see the common similarities and the common truths in them, and also some of the differences to understand what makes leadership effective. That's what I want to share with you today, is what some of the things are that make leadership effective and how you can apply those lessons directly into your lives immediately. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is, it starts with a self-diagnostic, something I call an attitude check. The first attitude check is you need them more than they need you. Let me say that again, because it's important. You need them more than they need you. Now you might be thinking, but hey, I am the head cheese. Maybe you are. You might be thinking, I am the one who has all this historical knowledge of this company. It's my company. They need me. Imagine trying to do everything in your organization by yourself. You can't. It's extremely limiting. So understanding that you need them to help you achieve your goals is the first diagnostic in the attitude check. That you need them. So as we understand that first diagnostic, okay, we need them, we need to work with other people, we need to be leaders. Not just managers, but leaders. You don't manage people. You manage projects. You manage tasks. You lead people. Big difference. And companies today are not looking for managers. Companies are looking for leaders. Companies can teach you management skills. Truthfully, they can teach you leadership skills as well, but they want you to bring that to the table on your own. I once read a book about leadership recently, and one of the first things it said in the book is not everybody can be a leader. I thought, I'm washed. <laughs> everybody can be a leader. Yes, some people have a little bit more aptitude for it than others. Some people may be predisposed to it than others, but absolutely everybody can be a leader, because what is a leader? A leader is not just a high up executive in a, in a management structure in some organization. A leader is not just someone that has a title of a district officer or a club officer. A leader is a parent, it's a coach, it's a mentor. It's anybody that you look to to say, yes, help me get there. So in your leadership journey, we need to understand different types of leadership. And, and I've come up with the realization that there's really two primary types of leadership. The first one is what I call command and control. Command and control is where you bark orders and they follow with perfect military precision. <laughs> and it, it's very popular in the military, as you said. Now, it works in the military too. It works very well in the military. It doesn't work very well outside of the military. And there's a couple reasons for that. And the reasons are very simple. Primarily, number one, the people that are in the military volunteer to go into the military. They want that type of structure. They want that type of environment. They want that type of discipline in their lives. 
So someone who joins the military is looking for that type of environment. Now, in my case, I joined the United States Marine Corps, which means I'm even way more twisted and warped than a lot of other people. Hoorah! See? That's the military. That's command and control. And there are times when command and control really works. But the other reason it works so well in the military is that the military does something that no one else does. They spend months and months training. They will take you and they will break you down and they will build you back up. You will spend months in training programs, in boot camp, in officer candidate school, in class A school, duty schools, drills, all these things that you do for months before you ever show up on a job. You have been trained to do. That's why they can just bark orders and you follow because you know the rest of the routine once that first order has been given. And it's not a micromanaging situation. In the corporate world, where we have these people that think that they can bark orders and everyone will follow, especially when you haven't had that training, that's what we also call micromanaging. <coughs> micromanaging it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware, it doesn't. Because one, you've got two people essentially doing the same job. And two, you demoralize your team. So if you want to build up your team, there's another leadership style. And it's responsibility and recognition. And it's a real simple concept. You give them some responsibilities and you recognize them for a job well done. Who wouldn't like that? And guess what? It even works in the military. Now, in a volunteer organization like Toastmasters, it's even more important because you don't have the power of the paycheck. <laughs> when you're dealing with volunteers, it's real easy for them to walk away, isn't it? Now think about that for your company. So if you're working in a company and someone is, is holding that power of the paycheck, guess what? The other companies down the road, they offer paychecks too. Have you heard of situations where people have left a job to take a pay cut to go to work for another company? Yes. Absolutely. Why is that? Because the conditions were so demoralizing that that person no longer valued the money as much as they valued themselves. And they walked. Now, I've talked to some leaders that say, especially in this economy, I can replace them in a heartbeat. There's a lot of people that would love to have that job. And to them I say, yes, you can. Yes, they would until they find out they're working for you. <laughs> and then it's going to happen all over again because you're holding the power of the paycheck. Well, here's the reality. People will work for less pay for better conditions. What are those better conditions? What do we want in our, in our reward system? We want recognition. We want some, some praise. We want to know we're valued and appreciated. What's our paycheck here in Toastmasters? It certainly isn't money. In fact, it costs us money to be in Toastmasters. <laughs> But what we get out of it is the opportunity to learn, to grow, to develop, to meet new wonderful people that we can call our friends, and that we get recognition, we get experience, we get praise. We get all these things that, guess what? Don't really cost a company anything to give you. So if companies started managing their pay staff more like volunteers, not only would the employee retention go up, but so would the productivity. So as we go into this leadership journey, there's something that we want to do, and, and that's first understand the, the two different styles of leadership. And to that I say, imagine your leadership journey is a bit like picking out clothes. There are things that you look at someone else and go, that looks fantastic on them. <laughs> you put it on, you're like, uh, no. <laughs> leadership is much the same way. There are styles and there are nuances that you look at someone and you go, that is fantastic. It works for them, but that's just not the way I am. That's fine. Take your leadership journey on a fashion exploration. 
and try on different styles. Try different things and see what works. And then once you've got that basic style down, now you can accessorize, right ladies? <laughs> now you can start to do the things that are the accessories that help take you to that next level, that add that wow to your leadership journey. Things like having a mentor. Mentors are absolutely critical in your leadership journey. Now how many of you have people in your life that you consider your mentors? Okay, not nearly enough hands. Now, how many of you have a mentor program where a mentor was actually assigned to you? Quite a few hands. I'm going to tell you something. I have a lot of neckties hanging in my closet. The ones I wear are the ones I picked out myself. And to me, a mentor is a very personal choice. A mentor is somebody I'm bearing my soul to. I'm sharing my journey with them, and I want that to be a personal choice. 